Welcome back to Team Tabletop to another day on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels. Every today, I prepared a Witchcrafter deck that I've inadvertently created while creating one of my other decks. So we're just going to test it out today and go for a daily video kind of schedule. We will be revising videos. We will be updating lists as we go on. So don't worry if the gameplay is a little bit weird. I only had a few hours to practice this, but I'll use whatever understanding that I have to educate you guys on how to play these archetypes the way I think they should be played. If you guys have any suggestions on deck lists or cards or just archetypes you want to see played, or ways I could have done better, please be sure to leave it down in the comments because I love hearing them and I love getting better. Because, I'm not going to lie, not a great player, but I can strive to be a better player, right? For today, Witchcrafters. Witchcrafters is an archetype released in Genesis Impact around two years ago. So how they work is that they're spellcasters. And they have the special ability where if you're a level 4 or lower, you have the ability during the main phase or during a main phase, quick effect, distribute, uh, tribute this card, and then special summon a witchcrafter monster from your deck, except the card that it was tributed. You can use this to chain up the level 4s, or you can use it to cheat out like level 7 or level 8 with different effects. And you kind of want to fetch cards with the effect that you want during your opponent's turn. So, Hain, if you manage to get her out, is discarding another spell card, targeting a card your opponent controls to face up, and then destroying it. Plus, it gives us protection from all the other targeting effects. Veer is pretty decent. During battle, if we attack some a monster, we can reveal magic cards inside our hand that are unique. And then for each unique named card, we are able to get a thousand attack points and defense points. And then using something like collaboration to have an additional attack phase, we can then use the bonus attack points to finish off our opponents. But rarely will that ever happen. But let's go back to these. Genie, when she is banished, well, when they go to the graveyard, all these little fours have a special effect inside the graveyard, which is if you can banish this, it gives you an effect. So you banish Genie. She will banish another card with her, which is a witchcrafter card, and then the effect, the resolves, is the effect of the card that was banished, and these two go to the graveyard, which is pretty neat. Pottery, pretty decent as well. If she's inside the graveyard, you can banish her and then get one witchcrafter card from your graveyard to your hand, assuming you have no cards in your hand. Pittore, pretty decent. You draw one card, and then you can discard a card that is a witchcrafter card, otherwise you have to banish your entire hand. Not fantastic, but not too bad either. Schmitta is pretty decent. One of the better ones, actually, and you had a one inside your opening hand. When she's inside the graveyard, you can banish her. And then when you banish her, you can get a witchcrafter card and put it into the graveyard. And then it's a spell. The reason why you want to do this is because witchcrafter has a way of recurring value. Because all the witchcrafter magic cards will always say, if you control a witchcrafter monster, well, this is in the graveyard, you can add this to your hand during the main, uh, during the end phase. But you can only use one of these per turn, like one use. So what I mean by that is if you use the top effect, like add one witchcraft monsters from your deck to your hand, you cannot use the bottom effect where you can put it back into your hand at the end phase. Which is why if you use your card, you use it for the main effect, and you kind of want to discard cards using this because you don't trigger the effect, which allows you to get it back. I know it's hard to get your head around, but you will be able to see what I mean once we actually get to the games. The Beru is here because combo decks are a ting. They are, they are such a pain. Uh, Ash Blossom's here because everyone plays cards, and Maxi's is just, you, you have to run Trey. There's no excuse. Everyone combos. Upstart Goblin allows you to draw a card. And reasoning, I think, is a lot better than Upstart Goblin inside this deck in particular. But Upstart Goblin is just better in general in many other decks, so I character one of them is dead. In theory, I want, in theory, I kind of want Tree Reasonings because it allows you to summon a card from your deck if they can choose it. In theory, I want to have Tree Reasonings instead of an Upstock Goblin because you can choose, your opponent chooses a level, and if they choose the level correctly, you can reveal cards until you reveal a monster card. If the monster card is of the level that they chosen, then every card that has been uh, revealed goes to the graveyard. Otherwise, you can put it onto your field, which is pretty good because you want a bunch of Witchcrafter cards with different names inside your graveyard. And you also want to summon Witchcrafter cards as well because they have no way of special summoning. There is a Dell that you can use. But I don't really see that she's she's not very practical in my kind of in my playtesting of it anyway. Feel free to let me know in the comments how you guys find it. Collaboration allows us to do an extra attack. The Witchcrafter Holiday allows us to special summon a car a Witchcrafter card, mainly a uh, it's basically Monster Reborn, but with Witchcrafters, and it gets to go back to your hand. This is the continuous card that goes to the field and prevents our card from being destroyed by card effect or battle once per turn for each Witchcrafter monster. And we can also discard it instead of discarding a spell card. By putting inside the graveyard and also has the ability to come back at the end phase scrolls same thing discard goes back to the end phase or you can draw a card by destroying a creature 
using a spellcaster monster. This allows us to special summon a card from our hand onto the battlefield as witchcraft or monster, and then opponents can no longer respond with activation to our activations for the end of the turn, giving us essentially spell speed four. Also comes back to the hand. The last one is draping. Target spells and traps in your opponent's control up to the number of witchcrafters you control. And then put it back in their hand. That's pretty good. But I don't really use it for that. I use it mainly for the effect of putting it on because you want a bunch of cards inside your hand because you want to discard a lot of stuff. And the reason why for that is because we can use Alistair as well using the Alistair package, which allows us to find Invocation, which allows us to find, uh, which allows us to use Magical Meltdown. And it's basically our win con to kind of like chain ourselves back up in order to win. You'll see how the combinations have worked and I'll try to explain it as easy as I can and my top process throughout the game. But if you have any suggestions in terms of deck lists, better plays I could have made, because this is a learning experience, guys. And I'm trying to do one every single day and there is so many new cards and archetypes and things I have to get my wrap around. We will be revising decks. We will be revising archetypes. We will be going back and playing things better. So if you guys see a mistake that I've made, see ways I could have improved on, let me now know in the little comments because I want to get better and I want to show you guys the best content possible. And if you guys want to support the channel, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up this video, subscribe for more content, and if you want to, support the business by going to tabletop.ie for more Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering needs. But without any further ado, it's time to duel. Okay, what are we on the play? Yeah, we're on the play. Not great for us, but not too bad here. We're gonna be honest, could be a lot worse. So how this is gonna work is that we go summon Batore onto the battlefield. Activate Batore's effect, so it can a quick effect, but I can do it during their turn as well, but I'm gonna do it here because I wanna recur the cards because it only happens during my end phase that these cards come back to my hand. So let's activate Pitore. Discarding a creation. Because we don't need the creation anymore. Because we can just find our creature here. Schmetta goes into the field as such. With Schmetta on the field, we can then use the effect again. Discarding our unveiling. So do we have different names inside the field? Play Madame Vir, face up defense position, of course. And then we're going to activate the ability of Schmitta inside the graveyard. When Schmitta is banished from the graveyard, we can target one Witchcraft card from our deck and put it into the graveyard. I'm going to pick out. If we do this, we can summon up uh, Piorte next turn as an extra monster summon. Or we can do this for Event Vir from getting destroyed by a card effect. Both are equally good. Only one, however, will give us an advantage uh, card-wise. So if we do this, we have two creatures on the battlefield next turn, potentially. And if Vera does die, we can summon her again using the Holiday. Yeah, so the Monster Reborn spell probably be good. It's, uh, it's between this and the by Street. I believe the Holiday is the better play. No, I think this is the better play. Because if we get the by Street, We'll protect ourselves next turn once per, uh, for it. We can use it to discard as well. But on top of that, Veer, once we discard the card, we'll still be able to have the effect of Bias Street on the battlefield. Yeah, so let's go with this. And now we will just pass the turn here. And here's the funny part. Would you like to put it back in your hand? Yes. Would you like to put Bias Street back? Onto the field. I would. Would you like to put an unveiling back in your hand? I would. There you are. See this? Value right here. Opponent is going to their main phase. What are they planning today? Opponent is finally making a move. Cool. Normal or fifth seven, you can add one ritual monster. Or spell. Right. Extra deck has 15 creatures inside it. It's a play to do. It's a play to make here to uh, disable this. So we disable this or negate it. We'll be able to prevent them from grabbing a card. But I don't know if they already have a ritual monster here. Yeah, I don't think this is the problem. 
Ash Blossom all the way, but currently don't have an Ash Blossom. We also have the Nibiru as well, if they do some crazy chaining. But... Don't s oh, oh, that's, that's not good. A Blue Eyes deck. What that? Reveal a ritual monster card. And one implication monster from your deck, except it. If this card is special summon from the deck, add one ritual monster from your deck to your hand. The effect has been triggered. So, reveal a monster, special summon both this card from your hand, and one implication monster from your deck. Okay. So they're not going to be using their extra deck here. So they'll summon this, and then they'll find a card from their deck, which brings them up to tree. When it's summoned from the deck, add a ritual card. You can only use this effect once per turn, only once that turn. How does Blue Eyes Max Dragon work again? Does piercing damage cannot be targeted with effects, cannot be destroyed by card effects? Uh, yeah, that's fine, I think. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, I don't want to turn that one off just yet. Kind of want them to summon at least two more things here. Okay. Don't want to activate this effect. Got two dragon monsters, 3,000 or more. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit weird. How do we win this? There's Blue Eyes. There's Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. Okay, they're gonna be playing Chaos Swarm now. Put this down. This is what I'm doing. Allows them to summon a ritual monster, okay. Hmm, interesting. Any chaos for hand or graveyard, banish. Okay. Not the worst yet. So they can no longer summon them their extra deck for the rest of this turn anyway. It's been a while since I've seen the ritual version of this. It's usually just the uh, other one. The pure blue eyes build. No, we don't need to remove this just yet. Come on, summon one more, one more. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Let's see what they got. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? There's Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. So, how does Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon work? Your opponent cannot target this with card effects. Also cannot be destroyed by card effects. If it was Ritual Summoned, when then you declare an attack, you can change the battle position to as many monsters as you want as possible. And if you do, the attack defense becomes zero. Also, this turn, if it attacks a monster, uh, defense position monster, it will do piercing damage. Yeah, go ahead. This is a quick effect, right? Yeah, so we can do it during the combat save. Will the opponent just rage quit? Maybe. I rage quit. Nibiru. Go! Boom. You go here. I'm not gonna lie though. Uh, yeah, we can refill our hand easily enough. We have creation inside our hand. <laughs> Where's your god now, Mr. Doorway? I believe in the mighty rock. 
Also known as Dwayne Johnson sometimes. And Maui. Scorpion King? I don't know what else he does. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Did you pick the wrong person to fuck with? Alright. Boring no turn. Draw. Monster card though. Cool beans. So the way this works is Schmitte. Activate the effect of Schmitte. Discarding one creation, I believe. Creation now gone. We can pick out... Who should we take out? Say Hain. Hain's pretty good. I kind of want a light monster. Just so we can go grab his stuff. I think we can win this, actually. Are we are able to summon one more card. So, Gemini needs to go into the graveyard, I believe. Or Genie, apologies. If Genie goes into the graveyard, we can copy the effect to bring something back. But we need to bring the holiday into here, first of all, so... Hmm... Where's the line? I know we can win this turn. So, witchcrafts are into that, into this, destroys that. We do 2,400 da 5,400 damage. 5,400 damage is nothing. Oh, we can do it. I'm an idiot. Okay, cool. So, we, we do creation. Don't activate that. We will find... I'm assuming you. Yeah, assuming it is Genie. Doesn't matter who it is. So the line would be to do this. We summon Witchcrafter un uh, Unyielding to special summon our Genie from our hand. Don't want to change that effect just yet. Genie goes over here. Then we proc this. So it would be 8,300, I think that's the damage yet. So we activate the effect of Hain. Remove this. Destroying one card that's face up on the field. Then we are going to... Special summon an Artemis. Removing this. Okay, Jean, go down. There's the Maiden. Maiden. Allows us to now chain up into the light one. So when the light charmers enter the battlefield, we can activate their ability to target one light monster inside our opponent's graveyard and special summon it to our side of the field. So let's do that. Removing Hain, removing Artemis. The reason why we have to chain into Artemis in the first place is because we needed the light attribute, and our only light card was Madame Veer, who's currently in the graveyard. So here we go. There's a charmer. Activate the effect. Kolka Hatsudo. Blue eyes, come to me. It's funny. So that's 7,850, which isn't enough to kill them. It's very sad. Which is why we gotta chain even one step higher. One step closer to can you feel the boogie? Okay. This goes into here like this. Sacrificing them two for a Link 4 monster, because, you know, Link 2 plus Link 1 plus one monster is uh, tree monsters, which gives us uh, tree links. Arawarayo. Celine, Queen of the Master Magicians. Enters the battlefield, gets spell counters equal to the amount of spells inside each graveyard and on the field. Then we can activate her effect, which removes tree spell counters, allowing us to special summon one spellcaster monster from our graveyard or our hand, choosing Madame Veer, because why not? And now, finishing off the combo, we're going to special summon a Ace Code Taco, our access code talker. Sacrificing Selene, sacrificing our special summon monster here. When Axis Code Talker enters the battlefield, boom! Awarel. Allows us to activate his effect, which is he picks a Link monster that was used to summon, or that we had, and he gains a thousand attack points equal to the amount of Link's that card had. Selene had three, so we're at 5,800. 
then proceed to our battle phase. We can actually use his effect to destroy cards on the battlefield, but we don't need to do that because he has nothing left. Boom, Nibiru. Boom, access code Taka. <sighs> Finishing him off. Yeah, but many ways we could have approached that. Pretty decent to have the charmers just to steal their stuff here and do the combinations. I wish there was a way to just see the board because then I can show you guys his graveyard as well. Agreed. How dare he. So turn number one, let's try to get the Alistair out if possible. Okay, invoked. Go ahead. Play Alistair. Alistair's effect, getting the implication from our deck into our hand. No, okay. We're not going to Ash Blossom our own Alistair, no. Activate for the Light Monster Artemis. We have to be conscious that we can't use the Light Charmer at will now because we've gotten rid of the Light. Activate this. Summon Makaba. Use this and this. Invoke Makaba, come out. So then we can use creation to grab one of our cards if we wanted to. Or we hold it up. But first things first, we're going to get Invocation back. Well, we're going to get Alistair back. With the Invocation. Use Witchcraft to Creation. Gemini will get this card next turn anyway. So we're the best thing to do to use Creation. Then the Holiday. We can use the holiday next turn to revive them. So creation probably the best use here, but then we need to sit this card a card. So yeah, I think we just need to keep everything in our hand currently, depending on what they do. We got one hand trap, one negate, and yeah, that's it. And one pump up spell. Oh boy. That's a blossom. Anything else? No? Resolves. Ash Blossom resolves against the Pot of Extravagance. They can no longer do stuff. And they lost six cards. They're also playing Witchcrafters. Neat. Okay. Uh, no. Won't activate this. Hell, very strange. Tripity effect. Discarding a card. In response, we'll activate this to remove our genie. They gain the effect of Schmitta, putting her into banishment, so they don't even get to populate their grave. You do banish the card. Hmm. They're going to need an activation there. So they're going to play Holiday again to try to do this one more time. I've got nothing against this one now. I can't do it again. I thought we banished the card once we uh, negate the effect. Turns out that's not the case. But they can only activate the effect once per turn, right? Yeah, only once per turn. Creation goes back into the hand. We're gonna get draw. Hmm. Interesting. So destroy that, put that into the banishment pile, then we get the cards back. Would that make sense? So with Alistair, we can attack into that. Potentially use the fire one in order to go into a lethal board. Would that be enough? I don't think it would be, right? So one, two, three, four. We have 5,300, which is eight, 7,800. It's not enough to kill him, no. Unless we use the Gemini in order to take it out as well. I think we just barely have enough to kill them. Like, I really mean barely. So... 
how this works is summon Alistair. Okay. Alistair can come out now. We need that thing to die. Somehow. No, we don't actually have enough. I forgot that this thing is also on the field. We need to remove it somehow. Removing it won't be easy. Do this, move to that, destroy that using the effect of it. We need like 4,000 damage, but that won't be enough. Hmm. Oh, we can do it kind of like this and like that. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird thing we're going to try to do, but let's go for it. So Wishcraft a Holiday into the Genie, bringing Genie back onto the battlefield. No? Don't you dare negate this. Okay. Getting rid of Genie. Discarding the creation. And when we discard the creation, we should be able to find Hain from our board. Or our... Or our deck. Put you over here. Hain's effect trigger. Yeah, we do like this. Remove the creation. Destroy this. Because when Hain's ability is that we can target one thing and destroy it. And they have an Arulu. Oh no! And look at us without any monster cards to negate that effect. Damn. Oh dear. Oh dear me. There's Madame Veer. Oh no. Puts that back into our extra deck. Hmm. There are ways in order to fix this situation. We have to play it differently now. This really sucks. Is the last card inside their hand a magic card? If it is, we're in trouble. If it's not, we should be fine. They put the Purgatory back into the library, which is not uh, ideal. So we do this, put this out again. So we need to bait them. We really do need to bait them. This into you. Then we can try to summon the Purgator. Okay. Purgator should be fine. We can put one more card into our hand to be even better, because then we can negate that, but we don't have the Mechaba anymore. So, wasn't even playing around this one. The mirror match is quite interesting. We can grab their Schmitta. We do it like this. But does Metamvir have an effect? Does she, did, is that last card inside their hand? The card that I think it is. Because if it is, it's very worrisome. But we're not going to get anywhere we don't like play, if we don't do it. Right? Right. So, let's do it like this. You go here, you go here. I don't want to lose Hain. But I have to... It's the only thing I can do. We can revive Hain. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay. 
play it very meticulously here. Activate the effect of Hino or Hita. Getting back to Schmitta. Madame Veer will not trigger. She, that's not a card. It is not a magic card. Okay, really good. Now we can use this to find their witchcrafter, which we won't do. Or should we? Hmm. We did this with invocation. We can do that later anyway. It's from both sides, isn't it? Fusion monsters from graveyards as well, so we can do this afterwards. So let's bring you out, then we get rid of this, and we get rid of this. So you, you. Don't need ye. Summoning Celine, the master magician. Getting some spell counters. Activate. 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 Special summoning one of our monsters here. Put out Hain, because why not? Then we can special summon our access code talker. Or we just attack into this. To that. No, it makes no sense, because Veer says the ability during battle that she can do extra 1,000 damage. So we got to play around that. So, remove you, and remove Selene. Or Selene. Arawario. Access Kotaka. Boom. Attaching a material to it. Selene. Attack, 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 attack. See if we can finish this off like such. So we remove you. Getting rid of Arulu. Then we're gonna exile or banish another card. Selene. Getting rid of Madame Veer. We're gonna play Invocation. Fusion summoning our Makava, because why not? How does attack? Getting rid of their light monsters. With this. Put this onto the battlefield. Invoked Makava, come out. Invocation, come back. To the deck. Drawing an Alistair. With the Alistair on, we should have enough power on the board to kill it. We can also use the effect of Genie, or Kina if we want to, to bring back Hain. Which I think probably would be the play. So, we banish Shania from the... From the graveyard, targeting Witchcrafter Holiday, allowing us to revive one Witchcrafter monster from our graveyard, putting it onto the battlefield. Put this on the face up. And that's game. Oh boy, that's annoying. That that mirror match, and this is why a Rulu, you know, it's very easy to play around on Rulu. You saw how how that is. Okay, we are currently still on the fucking draw. Are you kidding me? This is like the fifth game in a row. But we did draw one hand trap, which is the one silver lining in all of this. What that? How dare you? Dragon mates. Dragon mates are scary. Oh, they're they're terrifying. Especially against this. No, stop. How dare you try to do things. Oh, Dragon Vates are so annoying. Once they get the board up, we're, we're fucked. That's it though, Dragon Maids. Definitely gonna try to make one of these later. Why not? So she's summoning with a different name and defense position. Oh no! So they target their one, they bounce back the card, they put this one in, and then they can summon it again later. I hate Dragon Mates! I mean, I love them, but like, I don't want they're used against me. Oh, such an annoying archetype.
Hmm. No. No. All right, we just gotta somehow manage to murder the fuck out of them. Putting in a Dragon Mage summoning spell. Oh god. Add this card to your hand if you do return that monster to the hand. Oh no! Now they can fusion summon already! Jesus Christ. How dare you fusion summon on turn one? That's what I meant to do! There it is. Shield. Okay, draw a card. Turn this ten by phase, this triggers. Or hand or graveyard. Ah, Dragon Maid. Nine or lower. Oh no. Of course. Special summon. You can add one Dragon Maid from your deck to your hand. Fucking hell. And what's that one? Goes to the graveyard. Then someone wants one Dragon Mage to your graveyard. Okay. Do we have ways of stopping this? Because Shio is really annoying. How do I remove Shio? So, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can negate the activation. And if you do destroy the card, also after that, return this card to the extra deck. If you do summon a Dragon Maid from your extra deck. I need to bait that out. I need to bait this out so we can play Magical Meltdown and win. Okay. Would you like to counter this? Okay. Let's go with that. If we summon Schmitta, it's going to be very bad for us. Because then they can just negate the Schmitta effect and then we have nothing on the board. We can summon Schmitta again. Using Witchcrafter Holiday. Oh god. There's so many things we need to do. We can't... We have to do it in the right order. Ugh. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect negate the activation and you do destroy that card and ask after that. Do this, goes into here, we'll be able to summon... our things. Here we go. Okay, so we activate this, discarding another witchcraft of creation. There it is. That goes into the grave, or back to the extra deck, now they summon one of these lads. Once per turn, during standby phase, you can target one other Dragon Mage you control, summon summon from your graveyard or hand. This one summons from the graveyard as well. Turn scorch you do from your graveyard or hand. This is the same one, I believe. Yes. We only really have so many ways of doing this, but... The only way we can really do this is we activate Schmitta. Activating Schmitta. You can put Hain into the graveyard. Hain in the graveyard, we activate Witchcrafter Holiday. Witchcrafter Holiday on the stack, we can provide one of our Witchcrafter monsters, which is Hain. Do this, goes face up. Do 
we can activate the ability here. Uh, I'm just gonna special summon this fucking thing again. Uh, it's annoying. It's so annoying. Once first standby, you can target your control special summon from your graveyard who's one level higher or lower. You can throw in a turn to your hand. Okay, let's discard this. Get rid of you. And you go to battle, they're just gonna summon it again. There's a dragon. Attack to kill this dragon. Let's go to battle two. No, oh no. Oh no, she's back. There's nothing much else we can do. Jesus. Why couldn't you be a spell card? Good. Not good at all. Collaboration. Don't know if that's gonna help us here. One, two, three. You ever like made someone so mad that they break the server? It's so weird. Okay, Alistair into the removal. Let's see how this goes. Go! Reasoning. Give me a bunch of witchcrafter cards, come on. Are you going to negate this uh, somehow? You're gonna max see this. That, that'd be the play to make. 12. Oh, it's two in. Three. That's not a witchcrafter card, though. That is. Hmm. So we have a holiday, a collaboration, unveilings over here. So this goes over here. Activate Alistair's effect. See, this will be the one to stop now. How rude. Okay, Alistair's effect is now gone. We can't find our invocation to do the lock. 
but we can do other things. So the effect here, sacrificing the Witchcrafter to get rid of the unveiling, we're going to find ourselves a Schmitta. Face up. Schmitta is here. can do this into the Hain if we need to, but I don't think that's the play to make. Kind of want our cards back is the thing. We're always going to get them back anyway, so... One, two, three... So activate this effect. Discarding the Holiday. Putting in... If we put in Hain, we can ping them down. If we put in Madame Veer, we can lock them out. So I think Veer is the best one to have here. Our opponent probably is a combo player. So, Schmitte. Putting in a by street. Nothing there. I say we get rid of this to make sure we get more protection. That makes sense. So what is this one? A normal summon? Yes. Should that be a way of triggering things? What else do we have in here? Just Gemini? Or Genie? So attack, attack, attack. Attack, attack, attack. Attack, attack, attack. Yeah, Alistair's gonna die anyway, so let's bring him out. Because then we can still use the uh, Salomon Great Almoji later. If we do draw into another Alistair or the Invocation. This way we have three layers of protection for the Madam Veer. So end the phase here. I would like to put Holiday back to my hand. I would like to put back Collaboration to my hand. I would like to play by Street back into the field. Put it over here. Put unveiling back to my hand. Yeah, not too bad. Four cards back in hand. Look at that value. Oh. What are you playing, opponent? Throwing down a face down. Cyber dragons. Oh no. No. Just a summon. If you normally such a summon a cyber dragon. Yeah, can't do anything about that. Isn't there a cyber dragon? They can all become level fives. This car is banished. Okay. Not great here. There goes my man. Mm hmm. Kind of being used as fusion material. Must be first summon for sending the above card to the field. A monster and the extra monsters, though. Times the amount. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, what's to play now? Summoning Cyber Dragon Nova, All right? Let's return touch material, so I should summon this. All right. Keep this up for now. Let's 
Special summon designated monster. We respond with Veer now. We can. Veer now being summoned. We will now put down you. Chain this. To remove that. Effects are now negated. Banish one for your hand. Two thousand one hundred attack. It discards your possession in the graveyard. Special summon one fusion machine monster. Okay. A machine fusion monster. Let's see what they got. Yeah, there's the infinity dragon. It's very sad. Touch one face up thing. All right. Once per turn, or when it activates, detach one material from this card. Then give the activation if you do destroy it. Target one face of monster, attach this material. I gotta remove that somehow. Destroy it. But you can't destroy it because of the by street, right? So, how would this work? We currently have a, Jane, a genie inside the graveyard. Can we kill him this turn? Potentially. What do they have inside the graveyard? Light monsters? Yeah, light monsters. They can use this in response, destroying the card that we're going to summon. Which wouldn't be great. So we'd have to summon it with Madame Veer. Until the end of this turn, negate all effects of all monsters. So it's not just negating the activations, it's negating all the effects. So the play to make here, activate the ability, discarding a witchcrafting unveiling. And this thing can't attach the materials. Or even if it does, it just becomes negated. If he wants to do it, he has to do it now. Yeah, you'll remove a material. But you can't destroy Man and Beer because of the bias street. Mm-hmm. Get the activation, you do destroy it. So, the activation has been negated, but she can still do stuff. You can't do it again, though. Because that was one spare turn effect, so now we're safe to do whatever we want. Winning from this state, though, is it possible? It kind of is, but it kind of isn't. Summon Vittore, summon... Alistair, one of these lads, to do the attack. Attack for here. Will that kill them? No, it will not. We can also attack twice with the collaboration. For 4,000 attack, or 4,000 damage. I think we might be able to do this. So, Vittori, first of all. Shout out, Fusion Chain. Get the effect. Also cannot distract. When it is destroyed, destroy this card. Negate the effects of that face-up monster while well, this is on the field. Also, that face-up monster can't do anything. Okay. What do we have here? Genie, can we have a holiday? We do. Do we have another monster on the field? We do not. So we activate this in response. Or we just summon straight away with the genie and thing. Yeah, that makes more sense. So yeah, we just have this on the field. We let it resolve. We activate the effect of this. Using our... Okay. Using our Witchcrafter Holiday, we will special summon... Genie back onto the battlefield. With Genie on the battlefield, we can then Link Summon. A Artemis. Removing Vittori. Getting you out. 
then with Artemis on the battlefield, we can then chain two to get the Light Charmer to grab one of their Cyber Dragons from their side of the field. Oh, this one's a scary one. Let's get rid of the U first. This one can no longer do anything for the rest of the turn. Light Charmer Lustrous, please enter. Activate the effect of Light Charmer Wretches, such as summon a light monster from their graveyard. We can do it like this. Put you out over here. Then we will now special summon into our Selene. Treating this as two material. Treating this as one for our tree. Selene enters the battlefield. Boom. With tr counters equal to the amount of magic cards inside our graveyards and on the field, which is currently at seven. So after the effect, removing tree of these counters. One, two, three. Now the tree have been removed. We can now special summon this a uh, spellcaster monster from our graveyard onto the battlefield. Doesn't matter which one. Has to be pointing towards one of these areas, though. That's important. Now, using the diffusion material, we can then use access code talker. And if we do, will that win the game? I don't think it would. Access code talker will remove their few with the XYZ monster. We just need something to negate as well. So, what would be the play to make here? We can do attack twice. This banishes them. No, this shuffles them back in. So, we will use access code talker, I guess. Hopefully, with enough prowl on this, so we can recur some value here. There we go. Access code talker, come out. After the effect of access code talker, we can then use Selene as the material. But since we've only we couldn't chain up the uh, red one, so we can only use. Oh no, we do have our machine here. So we can banish a few tanks here. We won't be able to kill them though. That's the sad part. Mhm. Mm we can use infinite impermanence to finish it off next turn as well. So for now, let's do it like this. We'll banish Artemis because Artemis is no longer useful to us. Getting rid of this Infinity Dragon. We'll change Veer to attack mode. We can also use Petore in order to throw things away, or we can use Gemini to copy an effect. If we copy the effect of Gemini to put back the monster reborn, we can summon it up for an extra 1,500 attack points. No, 1,000 attack points. Bring us to a total of 7,300. So we're still short 600 here. So all we need to do here is we need to somehow put the... We need to somehow put Hain into existence. Hmm. I think there is a way to do this. So with Hain is 2,400, that's 7,300 plus 1,000. So that's 8,400. Okay. So the play to make here is to activate the effect of Genie. Using Genie, we will copy the effect of Holiday, banishing them both into the graveyard. We will summon Witchcrafter Priority to the field. As we didn't activate Priority's effect this turn yet, because she was disabled until the, this turn, we'll activate her effect now. Discarding the Witchcrafter by Street, which has served us very well. Allowing us to put down Hain into face up position. And then that should be more than enough to finish the game. Okay. Boom. Boom. And Madam Veer, take take the lead. Oh man. That required a lot of brainy. Brain hurdy. Brain hurdy. But yeah, that's how you win the game with uh, witchcrafters, guys. Let's let's see if we can try to get another one in. <laughs> What are we here? We're on the play. Not a bad hand for the play. Nope, we're on the draw. Oh, uh, God. No hand traps yet again. Oh, God. How many hand traps are there? There's like nine hand traps. A quarter of our deck is just fucking responses, and we still haven't gotten anything.
There's Bahu Shark. Special summon. Can I attack? Well, turn one. Hmm. Yeah, and the barrier would have been a great thing to draw here. Totally awesome. Oh, no. Once per turn during the standby phase, you can attach one special summon a frog. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or a trap or a monster effect, send an aqua monster from your hand or face up to the field of the graveyard and negate the activation. And if you do, destroy that card. Then you can set it on your field. Okay. Uh, weird way of playing this, but all right. We have to bait it out with the Alistair, right? That's the play. And then we can destroy the Toad later. With Hain. Let's see what they have for me. Would you like to negate this Alistair? Such a summon a frog must return. Send one lock monster from your hand or face up under field and get the activation. You could do destroy Alistair. Usually that would have been the end for us because we can't really do much else. But not too bad here. Okay. That is fine by me. I'm alright with that. There you go, have a free Alistair. I wonder what it is. This happened into the graveyard? If this card's into the graveyard, you can target one water monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. I'm assuming it's gonna be the Silent Angular. Nope, he puts the toad back into the extra deck. Interesting. Because the way we have to play this now is very <laughs> stupid. If I'm not mistaken about this, this has to go out first. Activate Schmitter. Opponent still trying to respond with something. We'll play the by street. that do? Each player can only control one attribute of monster. Send all face of monsters, all other face of monsters they have to the curl to the graveyard. So how does this work? So they play you, play you. This resolves. Can only control one attribute of monster. Sure. I mean, losing this isn't too bad. And citizen response. And then we can send creation into the graveyard. Summon up pain. Goes in match. Then Wishcraft a by Street. Activate the ability of Hain. Allowing us to discard one card from our hand. Destroying this, I believe, because I think that's the most problematic card currently. This one we can destroy next turn. During their uh during their turn, because we're gonna get a bunch of cards back anyway. Attack into the Alistair, destroying Alistair, putting him back to our graveyard. Go to the second main phase. We're not going to do anything else too much, but we do have Schmitta in there, so... We can banish Schmitta, finding a Witchcrafter card from our graveyard, or in our deck. We've played Unveiling and Holiday this turn, along with Creation with this card, so we'll get that back. And By Street is currently on the battlefield. So the card that we want to get is something else that we can use as fodder. Is Holiday already in there? Yeah, Holiday is there. So we can get the Squirrel or the Draping. Go.
can do it like this. And we have two cards on the field. Okay. Get back a collaboration, maybe? One of these. It's very important that we have ways of, like, getting our cards back. So... Is the drawing effect probably the best thing to do? It could become relevant, yeah. People can also destroy Magic and Trap cards, which isn't ideal. I'm guessing the more unique names we have, the better. I think this. Then we'll end our turn. At our end phase, we get to get back cards. Creation will go back to our hand because we didn't use it for effect this turn. We discard it instead. Holiday will also come back into our hand. Collaboration will come back into our hand. Now we have a bunch of ways to destroy stuff, so let's see how this goes. If I'm not mistaken, the Toad had the ability to negate the activation of things. And then destroy them. Where is it? Once per turn, during my phase, you can banish. Discard, discard. No, I don't want to destroy that. So I want to face up from your hand or graveyard, but you negate the activation. Yeah creature effect as well but he needs two material in order to do so two level two aquas which we can probably stop him from doing so that's a normal summon activating the effect special summon one level three four or five water monster from your hand in defense position except for the shark you can have some monster from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except xyz monsters So let's get rid of this. I think collaboration needs to be gone. Destroying this. Resolving the effect. The shark dies. The other one comes in. That's their normal summon gone, so they have to special summon if they want to get into their extra deck this turn, their XYZs. If I'm not mistaken, the effect is negated when they special summoned. Summon, nope. Does that it still has effect? But this only affects when it's normal summoned. Banish when it leaves the field. This one allows you to special summon a card from your deck. Hmm. Interesting. You just like I killed the toad somehow. Hmm. Easy enough. We have one negation of uh, the toad by using Hain. This is one do. Okay. Prevent destruction once per turn. Once per turn, during the main phase, you can destroy one water monster you control. Your opponent controls, and if you do, inflict damage. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're currently water style. How dare you? And then they resigned because they, they didn't read the bystander. Ah, uh, by street. You're you're funny. Finally, a way that we can actually play first. And of course we get our flippin' hand traps. Oh, I hate this. I really hate this. This is really bad. Oh god. We bricked. Oh no. This into there, but I won't do anything. God fucking damn it. Ugh. Please, opponent, play five or more cards so I can summon mine the Beru. Oh god, it's tribal great. I'm okay with this.
All right, keep going, keep going. I require monsters or for you to use up all your resources. Okay. Uh, that's a Nash Blossom. I'm okay with you summoning monsters. I'm not okay with you drawing more cards. What that? Oh, god damn. No. I want to craft like a fucking three of these. They're really good. The problem is they're ultra rare. Ugh, too many ultra rare cards. Okay, opponent finally decide to do something. It's two. Three. No, not yet. Soon, though. Soon. Very soon. Hmm. Summon one level four lower beast monster when the gates of effect. Oh, Jesus, Axis Code Talker. Four. Turn one for them, Axis Code Talker. Trevor Grades is ridiculous. They're gonna beat the shit out of me, and it's gonna be very, very sad. Oh no. Come on, sir. Four cards. Okay. They played around in the Beru. And we bricked so fucking hard. <laughs> GG's. And welcome back to the post game wrap up, everyone. And what do I have to say about this deck? Extremely fun to play once it gets off, but. A lot of the matches we just end up breaking or the opponent ends our day with an Ash Blossom or two and it's just not very fun. The archetype itself is very cool. I really enjoy the Witchcrafter concept and being able to recur value. Like getting four cards back at the end of your turn is just an amazing feeling. Or having more things on the field but they can't interact with. People don't read the fact that Witchcrafter Bystander protects you. They don't read the fact that you get an extra card from this. They don't understand that you can just do this in response to their activations and it's it's amazing but the problem with it is that it's not consistent it's very easy to break it's very easy to stop but it is one of my favorite archetypes and fight me on that because you know if you want to call this a bad deck i will agree with you if you want to say that it's not a cool deck i will i will fight you to the death but yeah, MVPs, of course, Schmitta, Alistair doing a lot of work as well, trying to use the engine to his advantage. You'll be seeing a lot more Alistair into this channel, I'm not going to lie, because he's just so efficient with a lot of our decks here. And one of the win cons is basically in using Alistair and the ways that the Witchcrafters can do. I would like to do a pure be build of the Witchcrafters one day, but the pure build at the moment isn't very good. Especially without the Headmaster inside the uh, deck list. It's just not very nice. The Alistair package complemented a lot better. 
And in the future, I would like to go back to this. We would like to come back to this as soon as we get the Headmaster and all the other cards and supports. But until then, that is just my opinion, man. And a lot of things that's going to be edited throughout the video is just I'm going to put a lot more stuff in here, as you guys can tell. And yeah, using the Charmers in order to steal their stuff, as you guys can see, pretty effective because then we can do it into Selen. Then with Selen, we can just go to Axis Kotaku or even Unchained Abomination, depending on some of the matchups. But it's very situational and it's very difficult to keep in your mind which elements are which. We can do it at this one because the Witchcrafters can discard and special summon a different Witchcrafter. So if we're missing like certain elements, we can just like sacrifice them to find a different element, which is really effective. But it takes a lot of management in order to figure out which one we've activated before, which ones, which elements are currently at whom, and we have to make sure that their graveyard also have the same elements that we want. And it's a whole layer of things, which we'll be exploring more inside our decks as time goes on. But yeah, that is our video for today, one. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more com subscribe for more content like this down below. And if you have any suggestions or you know archetypes you like to see, please leave it down below in the comment, and we can like have a nice little look. But yeah, if you guys also want to support the channel through other ways, you can also go to my website, tabletop.ie, and purchase some of your trading card needs there. But until next time, everyone, thanks a lot for watching.